Well, howdy, my friends. Uh, welcome back to another uh, playlist uh, video in my uh, playlist series called My Life After I've Seen God or My Journey After I've Seen God. You know, in a near-death event uh, in 2002 and 2003, uh, I entered into the presence of God and uh, made a plead with God for a second chance to come back and help people. And I've been uh, um, explaining what has happened in my life since that event. I am now uh, coming up on the year of 2007 in this uh, playlist uh, series. And uh, in this video, my friends, we're going to be talking about my uh, mission as a cowboy evangelist. And uh, I sing from horseback and preach from the Word of God. And we're going to get started on that right now. Well, my friends, have you, as you've seen in that little uh, introduction slide there, um, um, we actually did a, a live uh, show and video recorded it with me uh, playing a guitar and singing from horseback and also from preaching. In this uh, video, my friends, uh, we're going to be talking about reaching out to the people. So part of our ministry, my friends, is to reach out to people and take the Word of God or the vision of what God has put in your heart to the people. And as you can tell here in the uh, scenery here, you're looking at my uh, ministry facility, my personal house, and uh, the barn that was uh, basically called Noah's Ark. Well, my friends, we're going to get to a place in this video series where we got to start reaching out to the people. So let me turn my camera so you can see what it could look like to reach out to the people. So, my friends, that's, that's my mural, okay? That's... Uh, basically an idea of what it would be like to reach out to the people. So uh, first of all, my friends, you're seeing uh, a church building. So I started uh, in a church. Uh, um, I became a, a youth leader in a church and uh, I worked with a pastor to be able to present uh, um, a traveling cowboy evangelist uh, show. And we're going to be watching uh, a video uh, um Next, that's going to talk to you about uh, basically who is God, who is Jesus, and who is the Holy Spirit in four different songs. So this first song that you're going to hear is uh, Serve the Lord, my friends. Let's uh, take a listen to that song right now. I have your light this afternoon is Michael Nicodemus. He's traveling cowboy evangelist. That's what... Michael is doing. It's good to have him here this evening and his horse that he called Gail. He's from the One Heart Ranch Ministry. Michael, thank you for being here this evening. Well, thank you. It's uh, nice to be here. On this uh, Easter Sunday, as we uh, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, why am I doing this? Well, I want to celebrate His return because it's very near. As you uh, read in the uh, um, brochure there, um, we decided to. Uh, Become a traveling cowboy evangelist uh, team uh, after uh, opening up the One Heart Ranch and realizing that there was a, a call for it. And uh, I believe those of us that are uh, in the spirit and uh, in a horsemanship uh, relationship, we need to uh, be able to uh, bring forth that evidence. So the first song that I want to sing is uh, Serve the Lord. That's what we're doing is folks.
I actually just want to join in. There's just one name on earth where Bobby gave me say that I
Um, a couple of demonstrations that I'm doing up here. Um, first of all, is making a blind man see. Um, to be able to share the word of God from March back, there's not too many people doing it. To be able to play the guitar for March back. The uh, capabilities with a disability, or even without a disability, is pretty intense as you think about uh, opening the eyes of the blind. It's our job, ladies and gentlemen, to open the eyes of the blind of the people that are around us. The next uh, demonstration that I've been doing up here is uh, making the uh, deaf man hear him. I feel this guitar, I don't really hear it. And that's, that's a pretty big thing. And uh, I don't hear the tone pitches in my voice. I try to keep rhythm with the, with the guitar and try to make it work that way. Basically what we do is try to show people the evidence of who Jesus Christ is in our life. The third demonstration that I've been doing here is making a mute man speak. Six years ago that train accident affected my speech. This is a miracle what you're seeing here today. That's part of who Jesus Christ is. Uh, next testimony is, who is God? Well, who's God in my life? Who's God in your life? Well, he's my commanding chief and officer. He, Jesus Christ lives in my heart, and we answer to God. We also pray to God in Jesus' name. It's hard to uh, distinguish the both from the other one. So anyway, how much does God really love us? Thank you. 
done this in front of a camera or an audience before. We practiced uh, twice before we've done this. Now we're going to hand off the guitar, and this is something that she might freak out about. So just bear with me a few minutes here.
the devil has already been judged. That's how I know that uh, God lives in me. Sometimes when I seek to be a Christian, I want to just take it to Jesus. I want to take it to the cross. But see, Jesus says you also got the power of God because they all three are in one. That's an amazing thing. I'm going to do some uh, ground demonstrations and I'm going to show you guys how I used to walk paralyzed. I'm going to change out her uh, head here to do this, these last two exercises. gets a little stubborn sometimes. But she's a pretty good friend. Well, my friends, as you've seen uh, in the end of that video, I was going to do some groundwork demonstrations. And uh, you know that I lost my ability to walk for five months. So I did a little ground demonstration on what it would be like to see uh, a paralyzed man or a lame man walk again. You also know that I uh, lost my ability to speak for a while and had to learn how to do that again. So I did a little ground demonstration on what it would be like to uh, um, hear a mute man speak. Then, um, but I also talked about making a blind man see. The blindness that I'm talking about is the lack of being able to see the evidence of God and knowing that he's real and that he exists. So my friends, uh, I am a uh, living witness of the presence of God. I know that he is real. I know that he exists. And so I hope that you've gained some insight by watching this video and to know that Revelations 19.11 talks about Jesus returning on a white horse. And it talks about uh, he's faithful and true. So what could I do to show people what it means to be faithful and true from the back of a horse while playing a guitar and reading from the scriptures? I did that for a long time, my friends. So uh, I'm going to be leaving you with a, uh, a closing prayer and an altar call by uh, Pastor Rod Wetzing, which actually uh, was at this first uh, show that I did. And uh, he's the one that uh, I work with to become the pastor that I am today. And I thank him for that every day. So my friends, uh, as you think about this, you, as you rewatch this video, think about those things that are hard for you to do. Think about those things that uh, you're going through, those battles, those storms of your life. And think about the molding process of God wanting you to be strong. So when he begins to fill and equip you with his presence, your foundation will be strong. So my friends, uh, I'm going to close this out with the closing prayer and the altar call from the pastor who's going to close this video out. Until chapter 13, my friends, may God bless you. May his face shine upon you and may Jesus always bring you joy. 
I'll see you in the next chapter of this video series playbook. Two, me in the prayer. That's my prayer rug. So, she's anticipating a treat. Looks like she'll kneel with me here. accountable to you, Father. To serve the Lord, Father, is an amazing thing. For those of us that are here, as we proclaim to be servants of the Savior, Father, we hold an accountability to you, Father. See, we want to be accountable so we can set the right path for our brothers and sisters that aren't walking with you, Father. So they will look at the path in our life and they will say, I want some of that. We thank you that you sent Jesus Christ to die and to be raised again, Father. We thank you that someday he's going to return in power and in glory, Father. This last uh, demonstration, Father, raising a man from the dead. This is not my life that I lay down, Father, it is yours. You have the power to take it back up again. So, join me here, Father, and let these people see the evidence of who you are, Father. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen. I want to thank you all for coming. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Rod. share with people uh, and share with Michael is that God uses our strengths and our weaknesses. Sometimes we think, oh, God only uses great, wonderful people. God only uses people who are very, very talented. But it doesn't have to be. I've been working with Michael about his tone deafness. There was no way I was going to be able to do it. I love the saying that I thought, well, maybe I can help him. But there's something that has happened. Well, how could you use that? Paul said, when I am weak, and I am strong, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says that God is the one who uses whatever it is in our lives, our strengths and our weaknesses, to touch others. So as you think about this tonight, this afternoon, I'm asking you to think about your life. What strengths and weaknesses do you have? that God can use to touch other people's lives. One of the best things to know is that God wants your life to be like this. He doesn't want you to get better. He's the one that does that. He doesn't want you to, to become a perfect person. He's the one that does that that is that. God wants you just to say, use me how I am, and he will do it. That's how wonderful these prayers. Let's just bow our heads in prayer just for a moment. I want you to think about your life. I don't know what you have as gifts and abilities. I don't know, Lord, who gave exactly what the Lord has in my heart, my strengths and my weaknesses. And I know how he has used strength and weaknesses, how we can use it in Michael's life, how we can use it in every one of our lives. All he is asking is that you touch, reach out, and touch him. Say, Lord, I give you my life. And then the Lord says, I know I'll take whatever it's like, and I will make it something special for God's glory. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, you can do so right now, right where you are. You can just say, Lord, I give my heart and my life to you. And Lord, I pray that you will touch every person right here. Thank you, Lord, for the ones that you brought out today. And I pray, Lord, that you will keep encouraging us to reach out, touch other people, because, Lord, you have touched us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming.
God bless you.